are for chapter 25, House Guests. When we last left Bat, he had gotten his reply from Dr. Jerry Dragoo, and he was very excited about that. He was actually interpreting it a little differently, though, than I think what the doctor was trying to say. The doctor was trying to tell him that, you know, sometimes it's okay to have uh, a pet in the house, a wild animal in the house, if it's a baby and it needs to be cared for, but it's not like you should keep it because you should be, you know, sending it out into its natural habitat. Um, but he decided he was going to try to be the best caretaker he could possibly be and see if he could convince his mom to keep the baby kit. Um, then, at the end of that chapter, they also talked about how Israel really wanted to come over to his house and that he had a friend, and his parents are probably going to be thrilled about that. So I'm curious to see if Bat and Israel have a play date together. So let's read. It's called House Guests. There were just a few days left before Thor was supposed to leave for the animal rescue. Bat didn't have any time to lose, and all afternoon he practiced how he was going to tell Mom about Dr. Jerry Dragoo and how important it was that Thor stay with them as long as possible. But that night at dinner, he found himself nervously avoiding the topic. What if he couldn't change Mom's mind? Bat couldn't imagine anything worse than that. So instead of telling her about Dr. Jerry Dragoo, Bat said, Israel wanted to come over to our house. Who's Israel? asked Janie, dipping her chicken chunk into barbecue sauce. He's a kid in my class, Bat said. Bat, honey, that's great, said Mom. Is he your friend? asked Janie. Bat considered the question. Was Israel his friend? Israel was nice to him. He was interested in some of the same things that interested Bat. He, see, he didn't seem to think that Bat was weird, and he wanted to visit. I don't know, Bat said. Maybe he is. That's kind of a big deal, said Janie. You've never had a friend over before. Yes, I have, Bat said. Ezra, Ezra has come over all the time. Pause one moment. My little puppy wants to come up and listen to the story with us, if that's okay. He's my friend, not yours, Janie said. He can be your friend and Bat, said Mom. I thought you said Ezra is annoying, Janie said. He is annoying, said Bat, but so are you. And you are still my friend. No one is more annoying than you, said Janie, but I guess you're my friend too. Neither of you is annoying, said Mom, and Bat, I think it's great that you want to have a friend over. Well, said Bat, dipping his chicken chunk in ketchup, it was Israel's idea, not mine. He wants to meet Thor. At that moment, Thor was just where he should be, tucked into his pouch, warm against Bat's chest, and remembering Thor made Bat nervous all over again. I think it's a great idea, no matter whose it was, said Mom. I'll call Israel's parents to set something up, maybe Saturday. Whatever, Bat said. And then he said, Mom, there's something else too. What is it? Mom had a chicken chunk in her hand, ready to, already dipped in sauce, but she set it down. I wrote to a world skunk expert, Bat said. The words came out fast and loud because they were important. I wrote and asked him about keeping Thor as a pet because I don't want to send him to the rescue people. I want to raise him here at our house. I love Thor. I want to raise him here. I think maybe he loves me too, and I'm not ready to give him away. Oh, Bat, Mom said. How on earth did you find a world skunk expert? And then Bat told her about reading in his animal encyclopedia, about Dr. Jerry Dragoo, and about Mr. Grayson helping him with the email, and about waiting and waiting for a response and finally getting an email back, and about how Israel had wanted to read it too. I can be a good skunk caretaker, Mom, he said at last, and then he waited to hear what she would say. But it was Janie who spoke up. Wow, Bat, she said. That's pretty cool that you found an expert and wrote to him. That takes guts. I think you should let him keep raising the skunk, Mom. He's pretty serious. Bat was so surprised he felt his mouth drop open. Janie was helping him? Bat, Mom said. I've been watching you with the kit. You are so responsible and careful with him. But honey, raising Thor until he's old enough to release into a, is a big commitment. He'd have to stay with us all through the rest of the school year and through summer as well. That sounded wonderful to Bat. The longer the better, he said. You say that now, Mom said, but what if you get tired of feeding him and cleaning up after him? And what about when he gets bigger and he, oh, he's awake more of the time? Mom, said Bat and he did his very best to make his voice sound as serious as he felt. I will never get tired of Thor. 
That would be like you getting tired of me and Janie. Mom laughed and she reached over to squeeze Bat's hand. Then she shook her head, which Bat knew was a sign for no, and he felt his eyes stinging with unspilled tears. But she said, beautiful Bat, you have become an excellent skunk caretaker. You have been dedicated and you even found a way to contact a skunk expert. I have to admit, I am impressed. I'll tell you what, I'm thinking that maybe we won't call the Animal Rescue Center next week and we could try having you take care of Thor with my help until he's old enough to release. How does that sound? How did it sound? It sounded not as good as the promise that he could keep Thor forever, but still imposs impossibly good. Bat felt like he was vibrating on the inside. He was so happy. He wanted to jump up and whoop with joy, but Thor was curled up and asleep in the sling, and a good skunk caretaker would never startle his kit like that. So instead he said, thank you, Mom, and thank you, Janie, thank you both. Wow. Now, I would say that in this case, actions speak louder than words, and we've talked about that a lot. And think about it, a lot of times we say, oh, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that, and I'm gonna take care of it, like my friend Bean's here. It takes a lot of responsibility to be able to take care of an animal, and you have to really be dedicated to do that. And a lot of times we say, yep, we're going to do that, but then we don't. We don't follow through with our actions, and we get lazy, and we don't feel like doing something. But Bat really took good care of him, and he really kept up with his end of the bargain. So now, officially, we have one chapter left called How to Know Someone. So it looks like chapter 26 is our last chapter. All right, I'll see you next time.